I've been living with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder for many years now. And although I take medication for it, the treatment has never been 100% effective. I don't even know what normal is supposed to feel like anymore. But apparently, I'm not. At least, that's what the people in my life keep telling me. The love of my life was the one who threw it in my face the most. We were together for quite some time and we used to love going out every chance we got, even after I started seeing my psychiatrist. We did it all. Movie dates, dinner dates, hikes through the nature and trips to the beach. The whole romantic ringer. And it was often documented by Instagram selfies and that sort of thing. Anybody who knew us based on our social media would have guessed we were a perfectly happy couple. But the reality was not so rosy. Like any couple, we had our ups and downs. But our lows certainly outweighed our highs. Every single argument we ended up getting into got heated and out of hand. Sometimes even devolving into physical altercations. You're not listening to me! Shut up! I'm not talking to you while you're throwing things and screaming at me! I'm not screaming at you! I'm just upset! Over what? I don't even remember anymore. Just, just leave me alone! When things started to blow up, it always ended with her refusing to speak to me and running off into the bedroom where she kept me locked out for hours. I hated being shut out. <laughs> But when I eventually cooled off and heard her crying to herself on the floor, I always forgot whatever it was we were fighting about and did what I could to let her know that at the end of the day, all I wanted to do was be there for her. Baby, I'm sorry. Let's not do this again. It was your fault. It's always your fault. I know it was me. I don't understand myself either. I wish I could for you, but you have to believe me. I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't keep trying. Just please let me in. I'll come out in an hour. Just give me some space. I can't even remember how many times that scenario played out. But every time, we swept the issue under the rug and pretended like everything was okay. Neither of us knew how in the world we were supposed to fix each other, so we just didn't. Over time, I tried to figure out ways to compensate for the problems. For instance, when we went out, especially right after a big fight, I was always extra affectionate and touchy. I knew that was her love language or something, so I figured she would appreciate the ample PDA. I thought maybe it was working because it always made her smile. But then I slowly realized that it was a fake smile out of awkwardness. And that was the moment I realized she was thinking about leaving me. That made my blood boil. But I was dead set on not fighting in public anymore. So I kept it bottled up and acted like I couldn't notice her rolling her eyes and making me feel like some clingy psychotic boyfriend. But when other men looked at her, I snapped. All the pent-up anger blew up in the face of whatever stupid schmuck had the balls to look at my girl with some dopey smile. What do you think you're looking at, punk? That's my thing! You better stop staring unless you want a pavement facial, you got that? Stop it! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I'm not the creep who's eyeing something that ain't his! Stop shouting at me! <laughs> you and I need to talk! I knew what that meant. That was what she said when she was about to suggest we take a break from each other. But I always shut the idea down. But one night, when I thought she was going to suggest time apart again, she took it a step further. I can't be in this relationship with you anymore. We need to just be friends. You're breaking up with me? After everything we've been through together, you're really just gonna end it now? Yes, we're toxic. We're not good for each other. No, 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 I can't believe you're doing this to me. You traitor. I pretty much blacked out when she broke up with me. I smashed everything in my house. I broke windows, punched holes in the walls, and ripped the doors off the hinges. And when I came to, the whole place was trashed and my girlfriend was gone. The next day I called her up, but she didn't reply. I had to ring her a dozen times before she eventually picked <gasps> up. Baby, I am so sorry about last night. I don't know what came over me. Please, please give me another chance. You ran out of chances a long time ago. I know, I know, but can we meet for one more walk along the trail? We can take pictures on Instagram and just end things properly, you know? <sighs> Fine but we aren't getting back together. I felt a lot better when I knew I'd at least get to walk through the old nature trail with her one more time. I looked forward to it all day and night, and even got cleaned up a bit just to see her the next day. However, even though we said we were meeting there to talk, we were both pretty quiet. I tried to ease the tension by holding her hand, but she rejected it immediately. But from that point on, she acted even more standoffish. We walked a full mile in complete silence. All we did was stop every few hundred feet to take photos of the landscape for Instagram. Except this time, we weren't in the photos together, which definitely stopped. By the time we got to the turnaround point of the trail, which was scaled up a hillside and looked over a cliff to the rest of the nature preserve, I was honestly ready to just be done with everything. There was no point in the stupid walk together, and there was no point in even trying to talk to her, let alone try to win her back 
The view from the cliff was quite nice that day, and we both made sure to take photos of it. I got one standing next to her by the ledge, but then, while she was engrossed in taking as many photos as possible, I slowly backed up a few steps, got one last picture of her enjoying the view, then ran forward and did the deed. Here's the alleged photograph of the girlfriend. It was the last image shared via her boyfriend's Instagram. I guess you now know the disturbing backstory behind this candid photo. In my freshman year of college, I still lived with my mom. It was a small house in Fontana, California, near where I went to school. I didn't need to live in a dorm to get to know everybody in my classes. That's what things like Instagram were for, and I was upping my popularity by letting all the people I met at school follow me. I kept my profile up to date with posts and stories every day, taking selfies from pretty much everywhere I went, whether I was at the movies, at a fast food place, in class, or even at home. That's just what everyone was doing, and I didn't want to alienate myself, but that's when I would soon regret that decision. One evening, after a long day of classes, I got home and did my usual routine of studying and having dinner with my mom. I eventually got into bed, ready to pass out. That was when I heard my phone buzz on the nightstand, right as I was on the verge of falling asleep. I figured it was probably nothing, but I reached over and checked the notification, just in case it was a text from someone important. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was just Instagram letting me know that I had another new follower. I was groggy and could barely read the username, but it was something like, at Jonathan W, and then a bunch of random numbers and characters. That, and the fact that they didn't have a profile picture, made it clear that this was not somebody who went to school with me. My curiosity led me to check out his page, and so I did. I could see that he was following hundreds of accounts but didn't have a single follower of his own. There wasn't even a bio or a link to anything. However, there were a few posts on his account. As I began scrolling, I noticed all the posts were of the same thing. A confusingly close-up shot of some kind of cotton upholstery stapled onto wood planks, like he was some kind of construction worker. The only difference between any of them was that it looked like some of them were taken at night, while others were taken from the daytime. I figured the account was either just some bot or maybe some random weirdo, so I put down my phone and tried to go back to sleep. Not even a minute later, my phone buzzed again. This time when I checked, it was a DM from the same guy that read, Hey baby. I immediately realized that it wasn't a bot, but an actual person. I decided to respond back with, Who's this? Admittedly, replying to him wasn't the best idea, but I wasn't thinking about the fact that he would be able to see when I read his messages after that. However, after a few minutes, he didn't respond with anything, so I put my phone down again and tried to get some sleep. I was just starting to doze off when I heard my phone. Yet again, this time, I ignored it. It annoyed me to think I was about to lose much needed sleep just to interact with some Instagram creep. I figured if I stopped reading his messages, he would get bored and move on like most of them do, but that wasn't the case. A minute later, there was another notification. My sleepiness was already spoiled by how irritated I was, so I checked it out with the intentions of blocking him. But what I saw made me realize that I was getting dragged into something far more serious than I had anticipated. He sent a candid picture of me at school. A chill ran down my spine. In the picture, I was in the outfit I was wearing earlier that day, but I had no idea I was being photographed by anybody but myself and my friends. He sent it with a caption that read, Do you like this candid shot I got of you today? All of a sudden, this situation with seemingly just a harmless weirdo turned into something far more terrifying. I didn't know what to do, so I sent him a harsh text cussing him out. Who the hell are you? Leave me the f*** alone or I'll send this to the cops! Then as soon as I sent the message, I blocked the account so he didn't have time to respond. I threw down my phone for the last time and tried to finally get some sleep. But I was so horrified thinking that I now had a stalker on my hands. I had no idea who he was or how long it had been going on. Yet, somehow, I managed to put myself in enough denial about the whole thing and fell asleep. 
In the morning, however, I remembered everything. I told my mom about the whole ordeal before I left the house, and I could tell she was concerned for me, but also just as clueless as I was. I talked to my friends about it at school, but none of them have ever dealt with anything like this before either. Thankfully, when I got home, my mom had this idea of setting up a couple of home security cameras around the house. Neither of us knew what this creep was capable of, so she figured we'd have the extra measure of safety to help me feel safer. We made sure to put one of the cameras in my bedroom just before I went to bed for the night. I laid down and put my phone on do not disturb. I was strangely feeling comfortable, like maybe nothing was that wrong after all. But just a few minutes after I turned off my lights, I heard my bedroom door creak open. I opened my eyes, and that's when I saw the man in his underwear, standing in my doorway. I started screaming from the top of my lungs, and that's when the man suddenly lunged towards me. I began to kick and scream simultaneously, just to get the creep away from me. Thankfully, the sounds I was making were enough to make him turn around and run out of the house. My mom came storming into my room to my aid. We stayed in the bedroom with a chair leaning against the doorknob, and immediately called the police. Somewhat unsurprisingly, the man did didn't run very far. They caught him lurking in the neighbor's yard just a few doors down. We handed over the security footage to the police and told them everything we knew. And after a few days of investigating, we got the story they were able to put together. The man who snuck into my room was the same one who had been stalking me at school. He had developed an obsession over me and started taking pictures of me on campus and then eventually started following me home. But the part that terrifies me the most was how he was never a construction worker. Those confusing pictures of wooden planks were just photos he took underneath my bed while I was sleeping in it. He had been sneaking into my house and hiding under my bed for weeks. All I know is that I'll always be on guard whenever a stranger sends me a DM or adds me on Instagram. I'm always paranoid if it's that guy again. As an Instagram model, I'm quite used to seeing thousands of creepy comments from thirsty drooling dudes on my posts, especially the ones with my more seductive pictures. When I started out, they never bothered me. It wasn't so different from the pathetic advances I was used to getting in person. And after all, those desperate men were the main source of my income as a model. When you become an adult at a time like this, you have to make sacrifices to get by. But my parents were always judging me for it. They said they were just concerned, but I know how they really felt. The last thing I wanted to do was to be the kind of people they are. I was just waiting until I saved enough money to move out of their house and get away from their corporate attitudes. And I was going to take my dog with me. Her name was Carly and she was like my sister. She was always the sweetest dog, but for some reason my parents started to hate her. She seemed like she had developed some kind of anxiety disorder. Every night after my parents went to bed, she would start barking and just wouldn't stop. She had a big voice on her too and would bark constantly all throughout the night until her poor little voice was hoarse the next morning. I did my best to comfort her, but no matter what I did, she wouldn't quiet down. My parents got fed up and started leaving her in the backyard every night. Of course, this only made Carly more anxious, but at least they didn't have to hear it so much. I had trouble sleeping without Carly. She used to sleep with me in my bed, but when all that started, I would lay out on the couch in the living room until I passed out, scrolling through my Instagram out of boredom. One night I got so bored I went digging through my DMs. Of course, I almost never looked in there because it was almost 100% advances from creepy dudes. And sure enough, there must have been thousands of those messages. I never interacted with any of them because all of my good followers knew that if they wanted to talk to me, they had to subscribe to my OnlyFans. But one night, a particular account caught my eye. I'd seen him so much that I barely even noticed him anymore. But when I looked, I realized he had left a shockingly desperate comment, sometimes even multiple comments, on every single one of my posts. Not only that, but he had sent me a DM literally every single day. And every message was the same. Just him begging to be with me and asking for freebies, along with the same boomer selfie every day. I couldn't resist looking at his account. He was a 40-something-year-old dude named Charlie with a big fat double chin and a chubby face. 
He was following over 2,000 accounts, most of which were bots or other models, but he had exactly zero followers himself. Probably because he didn't post anything except hundreds of pictures of his face in the same pose in the same dark background which looked like his basement. I knew it was probably a bad idea, but for some stupid reason, I texted him back thinking he was too digitally stupid to find my OnlyFans. Hey there, Charlie. I know you want to chat and see more of me, but I don't do any of that on Instagram. If you click the link in my bio, you can subscribe and get everything you want, including private chats with me and exclusive naughty photos and videos. I didn't even have time to tap out of the chat before he replied. Oh my god, I can't believe it! You replied! I'm so happy right now! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much! You have no idea how much this means to me. You're the most awesome person I've ever talked to! Um, thanks. I couldn't think of anything else to answer with. I was off-put by the fact that he replied to my message so quickly, as if he'd been obsessively waiting by the phone for me. I was already regretting the decision. You're so very, very welcome. Would you like to video chat? I'd really like to see your face. My stomach quivered. Video calling this guy was the last thing I wanted to do. I was literally in my pajamas with no makeup on and my hair looking a mess. Plus, I didn't want to show face to this creep anyway. I put my phone down and tried to distract myself with some TV, but I couldn't ignore it. Between Carly barking herself silly and my phone buzzing constantly from all of Charlie's messages, I couldn't relax at all, and eventually, my curiosity got too intense. I had to see what he was saying. Why are you leaving me on red? Along with a dozen manic messages, he'd sent me another selfie. But this time he was shirtless, revealing his chubby middle-aged body. And he was also crying. I decided I'd had enough of him and muted him on Instagram. I turned up the volume of the TV and did my best to put the whole thing out of my mind. Unfortunately, I really wanted to know if he'd gotten the hint. After a little while, I decided to check one more time. He'd sent a bunch more pictures, all of him with his face getting twisted and red with anger like a fussy toddler. That, and quite a few disrespectful texts. Stop ducking me, stupid thought! Don't ignore me, you tramp! When I read all that nasty stuff, I got heated. I couldn't resist giving him a piece of my mind. Admittedly, I didn't feel any better after I sent that message. More like I'd made some sort of childish mistake. I paused the TV and tried to figure out what I should do next. I could hardly focus on anything, though. For some reason, everything was eerily quiet. That's when I got the last selfie from Charlie. He was in Carly's doghouse, crouching right over her with his arm around her face, trying to break free from his grip. I rushed to my feet and ran out into the backyard, straight for Carly. I found her in the doghouse, decapitated. She was in two pieces in a pool of her own blood, and Charlie's footprints were all over the place. Ever since then, my life has never been the same. How can I go back to normal when I know that psycho was creeping into my backyard at the moment? And to think poor Carly was just trying to warn us the whole time, but we didn't listen. I don't even trust my parents anymore. I live with some friends now. I've shaved my head and I never wear makeup anymore. I never even wear more than baggy sweatpants and oversized shirts wherever I go. It's all in the hope that if he doesn't find me attractive anymore, he'll leave me alone. I don't think I'll ever believe it though. I deleted all my social media accounts, but as far as I can tell, so did Charlie, which means I was never even able to report him. All the police have is his shoe size, but until they find him, I can never rest knowing he's still out there. <laughs>